I was just trying to imagine what it would be like if we said Happy New Year to God. And then I thought, what? First of all, new to God? He's got the year on his calendar. If we understand the Bible to be true, he knew us before we were conceived, right? So is this a new year to God? I don't know. So I'm just not going to go there. But I will say Happy New Year to you because we are finite. We don't know what the year will bring, right? Will you say it to me too? Thank you. And to your, to your colleagues. You know, uh, this is a precious moment. I've had the privilege over the weeks, just uh, eight weeks that Denise and I have been here, uh, to attend a Sunday church every Sunday, either here or in Oak Harbor. Uh, I get to make my own schedule, and I decided that was a priority for two reasons. First of all, um, when I'm doing the preaching, which is every Sabbath, I like to be ministered to as well. And I'm finding wonderful biblical uh, preachers out there that have something to share, many of them preaching from the Old Testament, which was a surprise for me, frankly. I expected mostly gospel, 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 but I'm finding some deep stuff there. But there's a, there are two other reasons. Uh, I'm, I want to be an ambassador. And I want those Sunday churches to know that the Seventh-day Adventist church is alive and well, and that we're nice people, and that we respect them, and that we are looking forward to collaborate in any way we can, as we have been counseled, where we agree, let us team up and work together. And so I think they're getting that message. And then the third reason is that we don't have, as much as I'm an idea guy, I love ideas, I, we're pretty creative, and we've been around the block, as you can see, from a few years of experience. But you know what? I'm discovering that some of our uh, fellow churches have some great ministry ideas. And I figure since all of them are coming from God, and I will give credit where credit is due, um, we can we can grab some of those and uh, perhaps use them uh, in an effective way, too. So I'm gaining a great blessing. And I just want to, if there are any of you visiting who are from a Sunday church, uh, one of the themes that I have been throwing out, and so, so far nobody has told me that they didn't like it, is one thing that you can count on is right here in Mount Vernon, we do Sunday on Saturday. The best of Sunday, of course, is Sabbath. If you go back to the history of our brothers and sisters who came to this country, they worshipped on Sabbath, and their Sabbath worship was an all-day worship. Many of them started it at sundown. Uh, it was just sundown on Saturday night. Um, but what we want to do is worship God, provide a worship option that's real and personal and powerful, that's all about God, on a Saturday morning here in Mount Vernon. And we're pleased that we can do that. And right now, you think you're Gideon's band, but you don't see all the angels, which is our topic today. You don't see all the angels that are filling up. You don't see all the future people that God has planned in 2016 that, were, that are filling up these pews. You do not see the people in the community that this church family is affecting positively right now and will be multiplying that uh, in 2016. And so I just want you to have great courage and hope as a church family as we face this new year together that God will lead us, he will be our guide, and that we will honor him. Praise God. Uh, do you have the scripture for me? Thank you. And I'm so happy to see that Jennifer is teaching someone, a new, another generation down the pike, to press those buttons. Is that so cool or what? Praise the Lord. Let's, let's, let's uh, read uh, these verses together. Praise the Lord, you his angels, you mighty ones who do his bidding, who obey his word. 
Praise the Lord, all his heavenly hosts, you his servants who do his will. Praise the Lord. Well, tonight, today, Denise and I have the privilege of uh, worshiping with you, and our focus is on angel voices. Before we get started, however, some of you have been doing some angel quizzes. And for those of you that didn't come prepared, I know Roger has been, has been um, selling, might not be the best word, pitching, pitching the angel quiz as you came in. So I'd like for you to get those quizzes out. And if you remember the old days when you were in elementary school, would you please swap quizzes with your neighbor? And Denise, would you come forward? And she's going to read the answer key. So here we go. Are you ready? Uh, okay, well, it's the first point of the PowerPoint. <laughs> Thank you. you go. Good. All right, here we go. Okay, the answers in this quiz, as you may have found, are all what? True. They're all true. All right. Angels sometimes hit good people. Acts 12, 7. One angel controlled several cats. Daniel 6, 22. Angels have been seen by animals. You remember, no, Numbers 22, 23, and an angel almost ruined David's city. And I couldn't find that one. Second Samuel 24, 16. That was a little tougher. Um, real people have seen real angels. Lots of them. Judges 6, 22. At least one angel has a secret name. Judges 13, 18. A dark angel can look bright. 2 Corinthians eleven fourteen. One person overpowered an angel. Hosea 12, 4. And one angel killed 185,000 soldiers. Isaiah 37, 36. All right. Now, um, so how many of you filled out the whole quiz? Let's just wave them. I, I want to see them. Remember? Yeah, okay. <laughs> if, if you're waving an empty palm, I know it's not true. Okay. <laughs> You've got it. Okay. All right. So Roger, look, Roger's back there in the beautiful red and black coat. So what you do is you hand your quiz in to him, and uh, he will give you at the end of the worship service... Uh, your choice of a gift. Uh, I promised a gift, and you're going to get one from the dollar store, but still, God can multiply. And there are some workbooks, there are some sticker books, and there are some wonderful little devotional books on uh, the gifts of the Spirit, which we hope you will enjoy. So may God bless you. Thank you for taking me seriously. Now you understand that I'm a teacher at heart. And in preparing for this quiz, you have done a lot of work on the sermon already. But before we go to the sermon, today is a special day in the history of the Mount Vernon Seventh-day Adventist Church. It's the first Sabbath of the new year. And as such, I had some opportunity to pray and think about how do we want to step into this new year as a church family? And so I decided, well, since we're giving gifts for the angel quiz, why don't we just add a few more? Today, you have the potential of receiving four gifts from God because you came here. We won't be giving gifts every, every Sabbath, but here today is a great day. So the first gift is a goblet, and it's going to be this color, and basically, um, we are going to give you an opportunity to raise your hand if you want to get this gift. And when you, the way you'll get the gift is simply write your name and your phone number or e and email on this piece of paper. And then when you go out after church, there are goblets right around the corner on the right-hand side. Uh, 
Roger's going to show you one. There you go. So that's, you will just take one goblet, and in a moment you'll find out what that signifies, all right? They're plastic, dollar store, okay? Wish I could give you crystal, but anyway, it's a symbol. It's a symbol of something great. Now, if you should choose this gift, um, this is green, so when it, when I give you that opportunity, and that gift will be either a can of salmon, raise the salmon up, yes, I, I figured you would, um, or some seeds, and in a moment I'll explain the symbolism of that. And then the last gift is blue, and if you want to receive that gift, you have to pick these two first, because this one only works if you have these two gifts, all right? And so now let's just uh, see what they are, all right? So. Uh, we're not going to give the gifts out right now. You'll get them uh, at the end of the service. But I have people who have these um, these colors. So first of all, the gold color. And I guess I'm supposed to forward this, which is uh, this way. Okay, so the first gift. Denise, would you read it, please? Do you have water to share? And the spirit and the bride say, come. And let him that hears say, come, and let him that is thirsty come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. So if you would like this year to give the water of life to three people, don't worry about how you're going to do it, because I promise you your ministry team here is going to help you if you're shy or if you need skill sets. We'll provide that, no worries. But if you really would like to give the water of life, to three people in 2016, raise your hand, and I have somebody who's going to give you a yellow gift card. Please. My yellow gift card person? Would you? There you are. Okay. Praise you. Praise the Lord. Don't worry about what this means. Some of you already know what it means to give the water of life to somebody. But if you don't, but you just feel like you'd like to do it, just raise your hand, and we're going to be with you this year to help you be effective to three people. Okay, praise the Lord. All right, keep those hands up. All right, we'll go fast. Next gift. Okay, keep the hands up. All right, over on this side, we've got several. Okay, coming around the other way. As you're thinking about that, keep your keep the water of life hands up over here on this side, and I'm going to go to the next slide. And Denise, would you read this one? Jesus invites 500 plus disciples. Go ye therefore and make disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Okay, we're not quite yet with done with the gold, so thank you, Roger. There's two over here, two in the back, and now we're going for the green. Would my green person, green gift card person, please stand, okay? If you would like, and by the way, let me just say, when Jesus made that statement, uh, we are told by an inspirational source, extra-biblical inspirational source, that there are, there were probably at least 500 men and women who had traveled for three days to get to that mountain. So when Jesus faced them and said, all authority is given to me, I'm giving authority to you, and I'm saying, go make disciples. That is a, a, a command that he gives to anyone who is willing to risk uh, making disciples. And again, if you don't know what making a disciple means, don't worry, we'll help you with that. This year, for the first three months, uh, we're speaking about Jesus in January. We're speaking about uh, the Holy Spirit in February and prayer in March. And by the time you get through this first quarter, there will be no question you'll know how to make a disciple. So if you'd like to do that, by the way, you can get two gifts today. So just raise your hand. 
and uh, the green will go, and maybe you could split it and help with somebody. Maybe, Roger, you could help again so we can move forward. Praise the Lord. Amen. Keep those hands up. Those are flags flying high in the castle of your heart for Jesus. Don't feel the least bit shy if you don't raise your hand. No worries. Nobody's keeping track. I don't have demerits. I'm not running uh, right now. I'm not running a military club or in any way wishing to impose guilt upon you. But if you think this would be a fun thing to do in 2016, keep those hands up and here we go. All right. Amen. Thank you so much. And now, for any of you who have asked for the gold and the green gift certificate, you have both certificates, okay? Now you qualify, you don't have to, but you qualify for the blue one. And the blue one is, here we go. Denise, would you read it? Would you help me baptize in 2016? Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. When Jesus gave the commission, there were 500 plus disciples, both men and women, who received it. And the commission included, go make disciples, baptizing them. So I've already checked. Um, I've checked with, um, well, I've been around a while, so I've done this in different countries of the world, different world divisions. And um, I haven't checked with your conference leadership, but I know that Bill would be fine with it. But I have checked with our head elder, and he's fine with it. And what's going to happen is that this tank right here, um, last week, by the way, in Oak Harbor, it was warmer in the baptistry than the environment. I almost preached from there. Uh, our furnace went out. <laughs> it was really cold sitting where you are. and But it was so nice and warm. So what I'm just saying is that we want to, we'd like to be able potentially to be able for me to be able to preach from this baptistry every Sabbath, okay? Now that's a little bit of a stretch, but you may think, well, come on. You know what? There's no magic in the water. It's a symbol of something very special and something great in the life of a church family. And it will, it won't happen if I'm doing all of the Bible studies and the disciple making and sharing the water of life. It will only happen if I'm helping you to do it because you're the disciple makers and I'm just a hired help. And my job, and by the way, Bob, if it so happens that the water doesn't heat that day, I'm going to stand in it, even if it's frigid, and in that, then you'll know that the hired help has the hardest job. But for those of you that want this card, you're going to come and stand outside so you don't have to get wet, right? But with the person that you have given the water of life to, that you have discipled, you will put their hand, your hand on their heads. And as we baptize together those precious ones that God has called and has used you to bring. All right. So now I've pitched it. Here it is. It's biblical. If you'd like to help me baptize this year and you have already taken these two gift cards, raise your hand for the blue. Okay, here we go. Doug Bing, if you're watching from afar, enjoy this. Doug is the secretary of the conference. And he, he likes statistics, all right? I don't care about statistics. I care about the fact that there will be sinners who will be in heaven because of you this year. That's what counts. Praise God for each one of you. And you're going to have fun baptizing with me these precious ones. Right, Mark? Praise the Lord. I tell you, there's no greater joy. You think I'm giving you gifts from the dollar store? Bonnie, $137 and some odd cents I spent yesterday. But I want to tell you something. Um, we spend thousands and thousands of dollars on what we call evangelism when if we just do it naturally and it comes from our hearts and with our friends, maybe $137 is all we need to spend, Bonnie. And then we can spend the rest on some other pressing issues like feeding the poor, clothing the naked, putting shelters on over people that are in frigid cold at 28 degrees and so forth. All right, so by God's grace, I want to thank you and pray a special prayer 
for each one of you who have these gift cards. Oh, Lord in heaven, we as a church family have taken responsibility and authority which you have given to us. And today, we stand in awe of your power. We already, by faith, believe that you have um, on your calendar things for us to do for you that will bring us nothing but joy. We will count all of the pain and the gas money and a missed meal now and then, and whatever it costs us, we will count it as nothing so that we can uh, bring to you our friends and our neighbors and our family members for them to know that they are saved in your kingdom, covered by your blood, kneeling at the foot of the cross and receiving a fresh outpouring of your Holy Spirit every day because we've been faithful as your disciple makers. In Jesus' holy name, amen. And by the way, there will be enough gift left, gifts left over so that if during the course of uh, days, weeks, months, you say, hey, you know what? I, I want to get in on that. It's never too late. So you're always going to be able to be a part of that. All right. Thank you so much. And now let us talk about angels. By the way, I love this. Uh, some of you have been doing some techie stuff. And uh, maybe did I turn it off? Oh, here it is. All right. Okay. I'm pushing the wrong button. Would you help me push the right button? I mean, just get me started here. Yeah, amen. You know what? Oh, I was going to say, you're almost giving me a reason to preach it. That's why Jennifer's good and Denise is good, so thank you. All right, so today we're... We're going to study from the Word of God about angel voices. You're going to find some things that you expected, and I think you're going to find some unexpected things today. We've been talking about angels and music and songs, first the swan song, and then God's the lullaby, and today angel voices. And in two weeks... Um, the last of the series on heavenly music. Yes. Have you ever heard an angel's voice? Today you're going to see a picture of Don. He lived in Oak Harbor. He heard an angel's voice, and it was so real to him that he tried to shake the angel's hand. This is Don, his wife, Violi. Don died of cancer a little over a year ago. Uh, Violi told this story last week in Oak Harbor. She couldn't be here today to tell it. I invited her. Uh, during the last three months of his life, Don was at home, hospice care, um, going downhill, strapping man, military guy, uh, at one time head deacon of the Oak Harbor Seventh-day Adventist Church. He hadn't always been a man of God. Violi told us, as Denise, vis Denise and I visited her in her home about 10 days ago, that the first 15 years of their marriage was just a living hell. And every night, she went to bed and prayed and said, Oh, God, oh, God, how can I do this? And with the help of, of brothers and sisters, her church family, without her church family, it just couldn't have happened. And a pastor or two that encouraged her. She stuck it out until one day Don said, you know what, I just can't stand it. I send you off to church on Saturday with the kids and you're gone all day and that's my one day that I have off and I, I love you and I'd like to be with you. And she said, you're so welcome. Come anytime. But he wouldn't. Finally, a deacon came with her and visited her and said to him, Don, I want to be your friend. After a few weeks of visiting every Saturday afternoon, by the way, that's what we do here, Saturday afternoon visit, um, the deacon said this. He, he, with holy boldness, as I would say it, he said to Don, he said, you know what? Your wife goes every Saturday and she's surrounded by brothers and sisters who love her. And she's a beautiful woman. 
and you need to be there. And he looked at him and he said, yeah, I'm just saying. They all love her there on Saturday and they surround her with love and they love your kids. And she's a beautiful woman and you need to be there. The next Sabbath he was there and he kept on worshiping together. And it wasn't long before he accepted Jesus as his personal savior because of the ministry of that deacon who discipled him before, during, and after the baptism. And the last 18 years of Don and Viola's, Viola's marriage, she said, were heavenly. Now, I know that, you know, even good marriages have bad days, so, but, you know, after your husband is gone and you're thinking basically all of the good things, so I understand that. But still, she said it, didn't she? She did. And, uh, and that was when he stood up and, and, and took ownership to be a man of God. And I, I, I couldn't help but be impressed by Violi's story when she said this. It was an honor for me and the kids, our grown children, to be surrounding him the last three months of his life in our home with uh, nonstop care, love, prayer, and worship. And she said, my, uh, my duty started at 3 a.m. in the morning, every morning at 3. Violi said, uh, I would go and take over, and usually Don was too much pain. He wasn't sleeping in those last few months. And he would uh, say, Violi, please read. And he would ask for a certain Bible story. And so he, she would read from the Bible a favorite Bible story. And then he invariably said, now, Violi, please sing Amazing Grace. It was his favorite song. So if you had been going by their house around 4 o'clock every morning those last three months, you would have heard one lady sing Amazing Grace. Now, she doesn't have an amazing voice, but he thought it was just beautiful. And about the day, around the day before he died, it was early that morning. She had just sung Amazing Grace, and Don sat up in bed and reached over right beside Violi and tried to shake someone's hand. It wasn't Violi. And Violi said, what are you doing? And he said, there's someone right beside you who's been singing with you. And I've seen him every morning for the last few mornings. And I just wanted to shake his hand. Was Don dreaming? Do angels really exist? Could they be extraterrestrials? Do children become angels someday? Do angels really sing? What do angels do? Stand by for good news. So I'd like for you to pray this prayer. It's becoming a little bit of a tradition with Denise. Read it on the screen. Keep your eyes open. Soon you'll be able to pray it with your eyes closed. Oh God, oh God I believe this, this is, is your house, house of prayer. prayer. I have come to worship you. My Bible is open. My mind is clear. My heart is clean. I'm ready to learn. I will never be the same again. Amen. Amen. Discover the truth about angels' voices with me today. Do angels really exist? Was Dawn dreaming? Maybe not. The Bible mentions angels 273 times. Abraham, Balaam, Daniel, David, Gideon, Jacob, John, Joseph, Mary, Moses, Philip, Romans, shepherds, Zechariah, and many who didn't recognize them heard angel voices. Was Don dreaming? when he tried to shake the hand of that angel? Maybe not. 13% of the 
of U.S. residents reported that they have seen or sensed an angel. That's from Newsweek in 1994. The statistic doesn't tell us how many more believe angels exist. For he commanded and they were created. Psalm 148, 1-5. Could angels be extraterrestrials? There are two kinds of angels that we find uh, described in the Word of God, and some scholars would say three, if I'm going to be fair. Uh, but the two that I want to focus on are the ones that live in heaven and the ones that stay on earth. So, heavenly angels are not limited to earth. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. Matthew 28, 2. It's very clear, and you'll find it in many cases, where the angel of the Lord, of the Lord, comes from the Lord, comes from heaven, descends from heaven, sometimes in the space of less than a second. We, we don't get that. Physics, laws of gravity don't work there very well. But what we do know is this, that the Bible is clear that there are angels who live in heaven, other places described as angels around the throne of God who are dispatched with messages and with particular tasks to do, and they come from heaven. But there are also dark angels, and all you have to do is look at a bunch of video games, and you'll find people that have figured that out, and you've, you can look at horror movies, and you can, I mean, I just cannot believe that non-believing people would actually believe things that the media portrays. But the dark angels are there, make no mistake, and they are stuck on this planet. And the angels who did not keep their positions of authority but abandoned their proper dwelling, these he has kept in darkness, bound with everlasting chains for judgment on the great day. That comes from Jude one six. So do angels have children? Where are the little cherubs? By the way, cherub comes from cherubim, which is a type of angel. And with all due respect to the R artists, that's Renaissance, not restricted or R-rated, okay? The Renaissance artists who actually created baby angels and called them cherubs, with all due respect, here we have the word of God clearly telling us. At the resurrection, people will neither marry nor be given in marriage. They will be like the angels in heaven. Matthew twenty-two thirty. Angels in heaven don't have babies. Okay. Um, so do children become angels? There are some who have thought. You know, I heard a story just the other day of someone who was happy that their baby died because now their baby could become an angel and could be of use to God. The, that's the question. Do humans become angels when they die? There's no biblical support for that idea. God doesn't want us to be ignorant. He comforts us by telling us that death is like a short nap until we hear the voice of the angel commander waking us up. First Thessalonians 4, 14 and 16. Amen. So let's read this together. The Bible is clear. Denise, read, lead us as we read together. For, For we believe, believe that, that Jesus, Jesus died, died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. So if you haven't yet heard the voice of an angel, someday you will, I promise you. And it won't be just any angel, it'll be the archangel. 
Praise God, 1 Thessalonians 4, 14 and 16. So the question now, and this will be a surprise for some of you, perhaps, do angels really sing? Oh, Denise, remind us of these songs, would you? <laughs> Soft as the voice of an angel. Do any of you remember that song? Hark the herald angels sing. We just have been singing that one. Angels we have heard on high. And to hear the angels sing. To yeah. hear the angels sing. Should we do that again? To hear the angels sing. Surprise. Really? There's no biblical absolute proof that angels sing. The Greek word for sang is better translated as said. However, it may be possible. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels. In a loud voice, they said. Now, this is interesting because you will find a couple translations that translate it sang, but by far, the majority of good biblical translations will translate that said. And this is a key text that many of us have thought, you know, absolutely, it's a slam dunk. Yes, angels sing. Oh my, I'm a musician and I always wanted angels to sing. Up until three weeks ago when I was preparing this sermon, I thought they did sing. I thought I could find texts that would show it. Uh, if you can, I would love to have you point it out to me and next week we'll correct. Uh, we'll put it in the email. So what do angels do if they primarily don't sing as the Christmas carols tell us? Worship God. Amen. Psalm 103. Share God's word from the same chapter and protect God's family. Hebrews 1. Celebrate God's grace. Luke 15. Angels worship, principle number one, by serving God. Let's read this text together. Denise, lead us, please. Bless, Bless the Lord, Lord you, you his angels. angels mighty in strength, who perform his word, obey the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his hosts, you who serve him, doing his will. Psalm 103, 20 and 21. Angels, principle number two, serve the saved. Are they not all ministering spirits? Sent out to render service for the sake of those who will inherit salvation. Hebrews 1.14 Angels protect God's family. See that you do not look down on one of these little ones. For I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. Um... So kids, this text is for you. There is no text in scripture that I can find that shows that adults have guarding angels. I'm sorry. Please help me with that one too, okay? I don't find it. But what I do find is, and I don't know what the definition of a child is, uh, but I will tell you this, little ones, you do for sure have a guarding angel. Isn't that cool? And maybe, and maybe they need them more. We have been given the power of choice. We've been given life experiences. We can choose. We don't need the gentle nudges and the little protection. God knows that our kids need that special care. Parents, are you so happy for that? Have there been times when you've just looked the other way and there they are running across the road and there's the truck? Oh my or the big dog, or any number of things. And we can look back, those of us 
with grown kids, we can look back at our lives and we can say, but for the breath of God, our kids were gone. Thank God for those guarding angels that he has sent for our kids. Praise God. Now, this is one that I was sure, I was positive because there's a Bill Gaither song um, that I sing, that I love to sing, and it has angels uh, celebrating and singing when um, someone comes home. Oh my, angels celebrate grace. Denise, let's read it together. Likewise, I say to you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. I was sure it said that the angels sing when a sinner repents, because that's kind of what the lyrics are. But no, no, I'm so sorry to tell you that I can't find it from the Bible, at least not today. So, is this what angels do? I hope by now you know. Do they sit in choirs with their little wings fluttering, with their little round halos, and sing? Is this what angels do? Maybe. May baby angels? No, maybe. Oh, maybe. <laughs> well, they look like baby angels, too, just to add that other little theological addition. Okay, so, Denise? Angels were not created to perform. Okay, did you get that? That's not the reason they were created. They were created to praise, protect, and inform. Is that fair from our Bible study today? Would you agree? Would you agree with that? And how cool is that? In fact, both in the Hebrew and in the Greek, the word for angel means, you know this, come on, you've got it, messenger. So there we go. Can you imagine being the angel who was selected by God to give what arguably is the greatest message ever given to the universe? Let's read it together. And the, and the angel said, said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which, which shall be to all people. people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which, which is Christ the Lord. So those of you that have taken this beautiful gift card and you're going to exchange it with your name address, your name, phone number, and email address, and you're going to place it down there in front of those goblets. You're going to pick either a nice clear one or a red one, and it'll have little hearts on it. And I even found one that had a little cherub's arrow going through. This is adv dollar store advance for, fe for uh, February 14. It's all good, right? So if you're going to take one of these, see, this is the beginning of how do you share the water of life? It starts with fear not. Is that so hard? Wouldn't you like to be able to say to your friends, don't be afraid in 2016. If the terrorists come to Mount Vernon, don't be afraid. It, I mean, how cool is that? How easy is that? That's the, that's what the messenger started with, with the greatest message ever given, arguably the greatest gospel message ever given to the world. Just don't be afraid. You don't have to worry. Don't be afraid. There's nothing that's going to come to you this year in 2016 that you have to be afraid of. For behold, I bring you what? Good news. So now the water of life is good news. It's wonderful. How many of you have been thirsty? You've been on a hike. There was no water. And your mouth started tasting like cotton. And you kept, you know, have you? do you remember the last time you were that thirsty? Okay, so this, don't be afraid because I, I have good news. The water of life is always good news. It's not guilt. It's not shame on you. Oh, you know what you did? I watched you. Or I have a group of people that are tracking you and your cell phone and what you're watching uh, on television and what you're eating. 
No, I have good news. The water of life is always good news. There's no fear in it. And it brings what? Great joy. And who is it for? Just the members of the Seventh-day Adventist community? By God's grace, it brings joy to all people. So if you have agreed to take this certificate and transfer it for a goblet, it means you are committed to giving this message. No fear. I have a joyful, great news to tell you. And this news is not restricted to anyone, no matter what their sexual orientation is, no matter what their color is, no matter what language they speak, country they come from, person they pray to, it's to all people. Can I have an amen? amen? That means you're telling God, so be it, Lord. You're saying to God, amen means yes, Lord, in my life, so be it. That is the kind of person I choose to be in 2016. And then the last part of this very easy is to say, you know, just in case you didn't know, there was a Savior born as a little baby. Born homeless in a cave, actually. Born, we don't know how cold it was that night. Might have been in the spring. We're not sure. We know it wasn't December 25. What we do know is this, that a Savior was born that Savior was sent by God. The Savior was sent on God's calendar at just the time when he was supposed to come. And he came for you and me, even though it happened 2,000 years ago. He lives now. I serve a, what kind of a Savior? I serve a living Savior. And that Savior is grown up. He's not a baby. But he still is as gentle as a baby. And he loves you. Is that too hard? Just for three people this year? I don't think so. God, just let it flow out of your heart naturally in your own words to find the right moment and the right place this year to share the water of life with someone. The angels served Paul last year at his bedside as he was dying. The angels celebrate you today. Read together. Likewise, Likewise I, I say to you, there is joy in heaven in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. So today, if that includes you and it does me, the angels are celebrating right now. But my question is this. Who will the angels Celebrate tomorrow. Shall we sing? It's time. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it. That Jesus Christ is come. And this time when you sing it, it's not just a Christmas carol. And it's not just a song that we has a nice little rhythm to it. This is our response to God who is telling us, come on, this is not hard. When I give you the command, it's not hard. And let's just do it together. Come on, let's sing this. Go tell it. Stand together. All right. All right, here we go. So go tell it on the mount, little little more rhythm over the hills and everywhere go tell it on the mountain that jesus christ is come while shepherds kept their watching or silent flocks by night
Jesus Christ is come. And now may the peace that comes only with the presence of the Holy Spirit and the forgiveness that comes, the forgiveness that comes, because we are friends of Jesus Christ and the love that comes from the Father be with you now and throughout this week, this month, this year, and forevermore. Amen. God bless you, church and family.